Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening this week with City Council news and weather. I got Flagship Friday. It's going to be a, a very special Flagship Friday, um, celebrating uh, Ready Player One, this, uh, Steven Spielberg's movie that's coming out, Ready Player One. Anyways, uh, let's not talk too much and get right into it. Uh, the weather... It is currently 30 degrees outside. It's a little chilly, but it's nice sweater weather from what people have been telling me. Um, you have highs in the 47, lows in the 28, but pretty much you're going to get pretty stay fairly stagnant. Um, it's going to be 20% chances of rain and snow, snow mixtures, so if it's going to be raining down here, it'll probably be snowing up in the mountains. Um, you have that 70% chance of uh, rain and precipitation happening Saturday night. Sunday, it'll somewhat lessen. And then, of course, by Monday, it's going to basically be kind of like the same temperature as it is today. So it's going to kind of peak with precipitation, and then it's going to start going down by Monday. But I heard that sometime next week, uh, we should be seeing some temperatures into the 50 degrees. So stay tuned for that. Um, Let's talk about some news items that are happening. Of course, it is St. Patrick's Day um, falls on a Saturday this year, which makes it a little too easy to, just for some folks to celebrate a little too hard. Be aware that DOI patrols will be in effect with extra patrols in the Missoula area. Uh, not to mention the areas on the highways around Butte will be flooded with highway patrol uh, waiting to get you when you least suspect it. Uh, but if you do plan on enjoying St. Patrick's Day festivities this weekend, you should know that the Higgins Avenue will be closed from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. This expands from the Red X's all the way to the bread company near the uh, Rock and Rudy's. Um, during last year's St. Patrick's Day weekend, the holiday fell on a Friday. Missoula police made seven arrests for suspicious, suspicions of DUI in the city limits, a number only just above a normal weekend here in Missoula. So people in Missoula... Uh, Stay good, even if it is during the St. Patrick's Day holiday. In state news, court-appointed court, court uh, special advocates for children, or CASAs, are a major component of court cases involving children who have been uh, removed from their homes for, uh, for safety purposes. CASA, being around 20 years uh, now, have helped families by thinking of the children first and finding places, if needed, for children in a toxic home environment. Uh, Bill Collins, co-founder, said that the CASA stays with the case until it's done, and in the time, um, uh, and in that time, are able to make uh, connections and form relationships with parents and children. Collins uh, found the relationships with the parents can be truly heartbreaking ones, and he quoted saying, "These are young folks who grew up in a system." in the system themselves, and now these people are parents. They're not evil people, they're just broken down by life experiences. For Lewis and Clark and uh, Broadwater counties, CASA has been part of the system for past two decades, a milestone in the organization celebrating its seventh annual Light of Hope banquet Friday in Helena. So uh, this is from the Helena Independent Record. Um, up next, we got some national news for you guys. Aaron, Zok Aaron Sarkin, uh, writers for, uh, for shows like The West Wing and many other monologue-based movies, is being sued by Harper Lee's estate for attempting to uh, pin uh, uh, to kill a mockingbird Broadway script. Apparently, they didn't like the script, um, and they get and the Lee's uh, estate gets final say in how any uh, portrays of To Kill a Mockingbird To Kill a Mockingbird gets developed. So Lee died in February 2016. Her estate maintains the contract signed between Lee and the Rudin's production company, uh, Ruben Play. In 2015, uh, that's when they decided to start writing the play, that the play not uh, degradate or depart in ma any manner from the spirit of the novel, nor alter its characters, and that the state has final authority to determine whether such departures have occurred. The biggest complaint of the state came from the depiction of Atticus Finch, w which in the book, he is the main character. Um, it was was received as a man who lo was looked up to his children as having a uh, moral high ground, um, but with the Sorkin script, it portrays him as a man who basically becomes uh, the man that you know him to be in the book. So the whole idea is like he's kind of like a uh, coming of of age. So basically he becomes woke by the end of the story. Of course, this would make Atticus Fitch a uh, more ignorant to prejudice of black people than depicted from the book. Okay, so anyways, the estate... Um, uh, let's see. The New York Times reported in the past that the Lee estate has been subject to considerable controversy based on the perceptions uh, surrounding its handling of the work of Harper Lee, both before and after her death. Uh, one of the incidents was Ghost at a Watchman, which was a sequel based on a lot of the notes that Harper Lee wrote, but never actually fully came up with a book herself, but her estate 
essentially made the book for her based on the note she wrote uh, at his Atticus Finch. So Ghost of the Watchmen, definitely not as high received as the original book, but it was uh, a book that was based on her some of her writings. It, it's very complicated. It, it kind of seems like it was like ghost written based on the notes that was from her and trying to get the tone of her. That was some of the uh, allegations for the newest one as well because she, um, in her own way, had no intention of writing another book after she wrote To Kill Mockingbird. So anyways, um, that's kind of what happened in the news in and around the area. Um, this is just kind of like the top stories. You can go to Missoulian. You can go to uh, uh, Helena Independent Record by going to HelenaIR.com, but also you can go to NPR.org to find uh, that Harper Lee story and more. But here are some new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. MCAT had a couple uh, problems the last couple days with our uh, broadcast of our channel, but we're getting it fixed and we're moving forward on it. But you can still access these online on our video on demand page, but also you can watch these on our channel coming up this weekend on MCAT, Channel 189. There's actually been a $350 million effort, $350 million donation by Gates right now, specifically to try and have impact on adolescent girls. And it's all, it's a, it's a smorgasbord of activities from how do you help them socially and economically and politically, because they're, they're the most vulnerable people in the population. That really, I think, takes a paradigm shift or a mind shift with the culture. And so does violence against women. So there's, there's, there's community education campaigns. I don't know if there's a magic bullet, though. I'm thinking about killing myself. You have got to have the guts to not run away from that. And that takes a lot, believe me. Because I've gotten calls in the NAMI office from people who are themselves suicidal. And there's times that I'm wishing I had not answered that phone. It's just really hard to deal with that. There's pain and there's obviously danger and you're thinking, what a responsibility, what if I don't handle this right? But um, I think as, as Mike just said, listening is the key to let, to let people express their pain, to let them be open about, I'm thinking of killing myself, I hate myself, I hate my life. We can't be afraid of hearing that. It's powerful, it's painful, but we cannot be afraid of it because if we are, then the person's not going to open up to us. All right, so some of those are the new programs to be airing on MCAT this weekend, and you can check it out by logging on to MCAT.org. Of course, you know, once in a while there comes a movie that redefines the generation, the genre of video games to movies, and this is definitely not one of them. Welcome to another attempt at a reboot quill to uh, the Tomb Raider franchise. Nothing says... Uh, stop it like an origin story so kicking things off is the new tomb raider movie hey guys remember that weird uh, 90s movie back in the day about a female indiana jones but with none of the humor and all of the unnecessary backstory well this time you get a reboot origin movie you'll remember uh, but this time it's with an oscar winner Maybe we might see something different. What could go wrong? But of course, if you match a video game with an Oscar winner, you basically get uh, a video game movie. It doesn't really matter. It kind of looks like uh, you got, it's like a positive 
times a negative is always a negative. So that's kind of like the way it always works. But it looks like more like a pre-rendered uh, cutscene from a video game than anything else if you've ever watched the trailer and whatnot. So moving on, Love, Simon. The story about a gay boy trying to figure out a way to come out without being outed. Um, imagine you're a kid in school who's in love with an online persona and are convinced, oh, that ought to, be, that ought to end well, an online persona, that they go to your school. You're convinced that they go to your school, and you've been talking to this person online. Uh, but of course, this is a buyer beware, as this movie follows the same tropes as any coming-of-age movies with all the awkwardness and learning from one's mistakes. So here's, here's the deal. It's always just like you come to terms, and you get to the point where it's just like, I'm in love with you. And they're just like, oh. Uh, okay, I have a boyfriend, and then and this is like all awkward, and, and you're just like, well, at least I'm a better person, right? All right. Anyways, uh, seven days in into BB, um, inspired by true events, which means here we go again, uh, as we dive into a world of terrorists terrorizing uh, and giving good jobs to Middle Eastern looking men, while at the same time, not really. Um, it's basically a bunch of white people versus the other people in this uh, inspired by true events uh, story. And I'm assuming there is a big climax where the plane makes an unprecedented landing and the hero joke says, next time we'll take the train. Ha 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 ha, the end. All right, that concludes all your pre-critic needs. I do have a fun little uh, video made by the flagship program and it, an I, hey, it's called uh, DT, the Dabstrist uh, Terrestrial. The Dabstra Terrestrial. Okay, it's, it's basically E.T. but with dabbing. judging the alien, I am mostly judging you. Dame la pelota! Tu eres loco! 
Yo no soy loco, tú eres. Dame la pelota, idiota. Y tú también eres un idiota. Y dame mi pelota. Wait, you can understand my alien, dude? A little bit, yeah. I, I, I've been trying to teach him the important gist of the school, like, like dabbing and stuff, and, and uh, stairs. That is really, really stupid. Why you say that? He needs to know more than that. I mean, like. Well, I'm working on it. He knows how to sit in the chair now. Fair, kind of. Well, it's very difficult to teach a language some people can barely speak one language. Well, the only language aspect is French. And this guy, he's my best friend. I've always got his back. No police here. No police here. No, police here, no. What, what no. are you saying? What? what, what? No, wait, 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 belong to you. You hear me? Do you hear me? This doesn't belong to you. Si, senor. Wait, what did you just say? Si, senor. <gasps> it's you! You're alive! Yeah, about that. Um, I'm just a student here that has been longer here. It's been by here for like two years. So you've been here this whole time? So you're not an alien? About that. Um, see, my friends bet me 50 bucks to go through the entire school day wearing this alien hat um, over my face and uh, speaking Spanish to anyone, but then acting really goofy at the same time. And by the time that you, well, I started running away, calling, saying no police, I just left because school was over. You were bet? Who would bet someone to break someone else's heart? So, so you, you know how to dab, right? Yeah, I was just giving you a hard time. Get up on the haters! Oh. The meme lord hates you. I'm going to class. I bet you 50 bucks you cannot do that again. Challenge accepted. This is gonna be legendary. You won't even know what's gonna happen. You need to like and subscribe and comment down below on MCAT Friday. Yeah. Double the meme. <laughs>
value of what we've paid for those prices with a total total price estimated and also a unit price. So John, all those are our estimates. They are not actual accounting values for what we've used in the past. It's my best guess as to what I think we will use. So it, 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 it gives you an idea of what we might spend, but in the contracts that we use, I can vary those quantities to whatever we need. And so it's, it's hard to say. Okay. So, if so basically, uh, what he's trying to say is that they want to create somewhat of a surplus just to help uh, work on the uh, the amount of demand that is necessary for road construction, and a lot of it's based on budgets of past times, and then looking at some of the uh, cost and raising of costs per like the amount of pounds per amount of tar that they use or uh, even the tar that they recycle and the cost go into using uh, buying recycled tar for uh, chip and seal projects. Of course, the construction materials in included are essential for the majority of the street maintenance construction related activities, including sand for snow operations, chips and um, emulsified asphalt for chip seal. So I totally butchered that one name. But of course, asphalt for paving, construction, uh, uh, pothole patching, and for uh, storm drainage maintenance. Uh, of course, you can check out the spreadsheet online. They have an Excel spreadsheet, and you can go to the link on the Public Works meeting online as well, and it gives you a list of each costs that are going into your uh, street maintenance. Um, public and safety and health, uh, the smoking ordinance is back, but only for a short minute of time. They wrapped up a couple of the wording of the updated language about uh, doing a of how they were uh, considering exemptions for certain businesses that have smoking, but also to have a way to prevent kind of uh, vaping to be in the air, part of the uh, American Clean Air Act, which was, uh, which is what Missoula kind of followed the guidelines for. A lot of times, Missoula is the one that actually created more of the bar and tavern ban on smoking. The state kind of adopted it and improved upon it. Missoula came back to it um, and added those updates to the current indoor smoke area. Of course, there's a relatively short committee item to round out the discussion once and for all and of course they'll be on the consent agenda next monday for approval um i don't maybe it's next monday or the monday after but this is just uh for exemptions and uh the, the implement implementation of the smoking bans on indoor like vape shots and whatnot and vaping indoors will be six months from now um human trafficking is a serious issue and in society we must know how and how to prevent folks from being used and abused by not only strangers but from family or friends and boyfriends that may exploit these victims missoula detective guy baker gives a presentation on human trafficking it's been very effective for the last eight years uh, a lot of people don't even know we exist but i'm not the drug task force that's the dea and with the fbi so today i'm going to talk to you about human trafficking and most specifically sex trafficking um, as i said a minute ago this is a topic that uh, is shrouded in misperception unfortunately there's many people that that believe that this doesn't happen here, that this only happens in big cities in other states or in other countries, when in fact uh, sex trafficking is happening in Montana and it is happening in, in the city of Missoula. So the victims of this crime uh, vary dramatically. So many of them have become romantically involved with the person who were forced or persuade them to engage in prostitution. Uh, others are lured through false promises of employment, such as dancing or modeling, uh, and then others are forced to sell their bodies uh, by family members. So these situations can last for days or weeks or months, and unfortunately, some of these victims find themselves in these situations uh, for years. So, All right, so that's an introduction on some of the topics that uh, we're going to be talking about. Uh, this is a highlight brief uh, layover, um, run over of all these topics. Uh, Detective Guy Baker gave a long presentation for the city council, and there is also going to be a presentation by the end of March for the community, and also they have a conference for officers to come together and work with the FBI and other organizations to uh, help these victims and also prevent um, – um, people from taking advantage of these people as well. Uh, prostitution is a choice um, in this meeting, and of course, while sex tra trafficking used uh, is using coercion or via any means 
necessary kind of way to engage in a commercial sex. Um, human trafficking is ranked two of the top three illegal trades. Um, here's Guy Baker once again explaining the other two. The three largest criminal enterprises on earth are drugs, humans, and, dr and weapons. Anyone know why it's ranked second? People don't realize the allure and the attraction and the benefit of human trafficking. If I had a, an ounce of meth and I sold it for 900 bucks, I would make my 900 bucks, but I no longer have my product. If I have a human, she's reusable. It's a reusable commodity. And with a female who's young looking, either a minor or a young looking adult, uh, turning tricks at $200 uh, is common. Um, three tricks a day is drawing a pimp 4,000 a week, 16,000 a month, and that's only three. Unfortunately, the reality of a lot of these victims are there with a lot more than three guys a day. In fact, doing quick visits, which are 15 minutes or less, at 100 bucks, girls easily make a pimp $1,000 a day. So one girl is drawing tens of thousands of dollars in profit uh, as they travel across the country through the interstate freeway system and he has a relative ease and convenience of running this criminal enterprise by a smartphone in a parking lot of a Starbucks or in a parking lot of a hotel, and they're not out on tracks where the police can easily identify them as we traditionally think. So uh, many of the things that the task force is doing is they're trying to update uh, some of the signs, and a lot of times uh, the task force it doesn't have that kind of uh, uh, manpower to uh, find find these uh, human trafficking um, uh, operations as well, since it's usually uh, very sporadic and spread. It's not all one big um, organization. It's very just kind of like, uh, it's it, it, it's like a person by person kind of scenario, depending upon, but of course, they, there's a lot of familiar tropes that I'll be talking about in this uh, city council report as well. So of course, $33 billion worldwide are estimated on how much money um, is made, and $9 billion are just in the United States alone. It's easy to sex traffic because what they do is make sure that the export they export the victims to another location, a place that they don't recognize and they don't know, to work in a massage parlor or hotel. They make them pay an unreasonable or unpayable debt to keep these victims on the hook. Uh, Detective uh, Baker talks about educating people and what can be done to uh, help uh, victims and help people uh, see the warning signs. Looking at something, and if you don't know, you don't see. So, yes, it's a very good one. And so once you train law enforcement, in fact, when we trained our patrol officers in 2014, my cases doubled in 15, they doubled in 16, and they continue. So once patrol officers know what they're looking for, uh, it makes a big difference. So uh, we've been doing that for four years now, and we continue to update our patrol officers and, and detectives. So these stories that seem to be rehearsed and they're inconsistent, they're a scripted response because it is a story, it's not the truth. They claim to just be visiting, and they can't provide specific information about their trip. You know, I've seen it twice, and at first you think this can't be uh, when a girl doesn't know where she's at. It's like, well, hold on, you know, everybody knows Montana's Billings, Great Falls, Helena Butte, Bozeman, Missoula, and Kalispell. How do you not know where you're at? Well, if she's not from here and she's moving from city to city and working at night and all she's doing is maybe smoking a cigarette at that entrance to that hotel or going across to the C store or to a McDonald's, you can see how they don't know where they're at. So, All right, so those are some of the warning signs. Um, another uh, th um, uh, things is usually girls with a boyfriend who is much older than they are and um, are around a lot of older men in general. Tattoos of money or symbols of the girls are uh, basically, uh, and they're also apprehensive about um, calling. Um, if you if you ask about their tattoos, they're usually apprehensive about them because a lot of times those tattoos are used as brands for the pimps as well. So of course, of course, contents of the purse never actually have money or identification, but has a lot of condoms and other sexual related items. Um, another sex trafficking sign comes from girls who have older boyfriends whom uh, the parents have never met or have seen, uh, who gift them with all sorts of things that their family usually doesn't. And a lot of times, um, a lot of these girls are not trusted with money and the pimps uh, try to make a level of dependence on them as well. Of course, dependence on these pimps are another way to control these women. And uh, Guy Baker, Detective Guy Baker, kind of 
talks a little bit more about how they can influence some of these girls. How does this happen? Obviously targeting vulnerable females, um, females who are homeless, females that have drug addiction, mental abuse, uh, mental disabilities and poverty, uh, providing those basic needs for them, that food, clothing and shelter, but also uh, leading them to believe uh, that they love them and they start to do this guilt trip and this manipulation that if you love me you would do this. Supplying the drugs to them, uh, requiring a payback and getting a girl hooked on heroin is very key in creating this tether between her and the pimp because without that heroin uh, she's going to get very sick so if she doesn't want to do it um, then you deny her the heroin she's going to get sick for a while and you shake that point of heroin around again and, and ask if she's going to be a good girl and she's going to be one to do it. She's going to be more pliable to make her do things that she doesn't want to do also when she's under the influence of, of heroin. All right. So um, many of the things that uh, are key in figuring out how people control other people, pimps are more common to be a romantic than a physical uh, prying on the girls who need a place to go and a place that they think is safe and all their needs are taken care of. One of the signs that um, it doesn't have to be girls who are homeless or who are runaways, it usually has to do with girls who are uh, who get targeted through their uh, social media and their smartphone devices. So a lot of times when um, they are like when you guys go to bed and they try to sneak out or you don't know if they're sneaking or not, but if they're on their phone late at night, that's usually a sign of how a lot of times they can get uh, uh, roped into situations like this where they can get grabbed and nabbed. Even if they don't want to do it, a lot of times uh, they put heroin um, inside their system, which basically makes them dependent on it because heroin is one of the most addictive drugs out there and one of the things that Guy Baker talked about earlier as well in in terms of drug abuse. So social media, like I was saying, it was a way for folks to connect with these girls, usually via burner phones that cannot be traced to individuals. And usually it's not the locals who are actually looking for sex prostitutions. It's uh, the, the randomness of the girls into different communities are being sought after by people who are also from out of the, out of the community. So a lot of times they connect here and they have no actual roots in the city that they go to. That seems to be a lot more common. Detective Baker, Baker has uh, officers online who, uh, who scan through some of these websites to look through there. But I uh, just want to warn you guys that some of the images here are a little scandalous for uh, some viewership, but it, it's not unacceptable. So here is just kind of like a, a couple examples of some of the online uh, that uh, Baker is going through. Almost 2,000 law enforcement officers since 2014 in Montana, Idaho, and Washington. Uh, our department uh, uh, is committed to training law enforcement, especially in Montana, and I believe I'm the only certified instructor at the State of Academy uh, for sex trafficking investigations. So a lot of times when I travel around doing uh, trainings for law enforcement, the night before, I, in whatever city I am in, I check these so it will be relevant. This one, you type in 18, uh, you can see some of these females. Now what's interesting here, it says I'm 18 years old, it says I'm 19 years old. This girl is very young. I would bet a paycheck that this is a juvenile. Um, just to show you how outlandish uh, this is and what is going on out there. Uh, this next one here uh, will tell you what she will do. This is how Backpage used to look. Uh, and then this one next to her. You see the crown here? Good indication of pimps involved says they're 18, they have two different numbers, but what's interesting about these two females is what? Yeah. Yeah. So even though they have two different numbers, that's the same location, and you can see the person has positioned them in a similar manner. Um, anyone have any idea why they're not looking at the camera, maybe? Because they're minors, or they're missing. No. Yeah. So in looking, you know, this, uh, here's another one, very young looking female, and these QV, that's 15 minutes, uh, usually oral sex, and uh, you can see here for $140, that rose means dollars, $140, you can be with two girls for 15 minutes. And these two girls look very young. Um, in this in this advertisement. All right, so online is used as an advertising tool to uh, target people. A lot of times the photos that you see here are usually stock photos and are not soda photos usually related to uh, what the video is. Uh, and a lot of the reasons why, like uh, Detective Guy Baker says, is that the reason why you don't see their face is because some of these girls actually might be missing or runaways as well and are on uh, police blotters for to look for as well. Um, I'll have, um, of course, 
there's just a lot of uh, information going on out there, and a lot of times you got to find the signs and figure out what's going on there as well. Um, if you drive by a shady hotel and you notice that there's uh, an older gentleman with a, a younger girl who looks like they could be a teenager, that's usually a good indicator of uh, prostitution um, and sex trafficking. Um, but of course, for more information, uh, you can contact Guy Baker. I I'll put up his uh, phone number right here. Um, it's 396 Three two seventeen. So if you live maybe across from a, a motel or you see something kind of suspicious in the area in terms of this, you can contact Guy Baker. You can also email him, guy.baker at ic.fbi.gov. Of course, he's um, also talking about a community event that's coming up as well as how the community can get involved. It's a community event that's happening Thursday, March 29th, 2018. It's going to be at the University Center Theater. And... Uh, it's supposed basically to educate the community on how um, and how to uh, find to uh, see the warning signs of sex trafficking and prostitution. A awareness conference for the community, and that is in conjunction with the Montana, I should say, in conjunction with the Missoula Human Trafficking Task Force. So, Missoula has a grassroots task force. The Montana, the Missoula Human Trafficking Task Force, has been around for about five years. Uh, it's really picking up speed, steam here in 2018, and this one-day uh, awareness conference that we're putting on at the university, uh, hopefully I fill that theater with 300 local people, and we can really start to get the message out there because, um, as I said, I appreciate your time for me coming here today. This is a topic that is kind of a downer when we talk about it, but people are just unaware that this is happening, and it is, and it's a community effort to deal with this, not just a law enforcement effort. So All right, so um, this event is happening once again Thursday, March 29th, at the end of this month, and uh, a nice little uh, list of some of the events that are happening. Uh, they have the sex trafficking overview view. Of course, you can watch it online. Um, th that was kind of like his overview of some of the sex trafficking online happening from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. This is all at the University Center Theater. Um, from 10 um, to 11.30, you have Protecting the Vulnerable. Um, you have Understanding Trauma Bonding. Um, it's with Julie Clark from the Missoula Salvation Army. Uh, sexual Exploitation via the Internet. Um, you have Agent Gary Cedar, Montana Division of Criminal Investigation, talking from 1 to 2. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. And if you're a parent and who are worried about your kids, they have parent experience and perspective. Um, to kind of help understand the warning signs of maybe your daughter or one of your kids might be getting involved with a pimp. Um, survivor experience and perspective. Uh, Tiana Calvin, trafficking victim, will be talking from 3 to 4 p.m. 4 to 5, protecting our children in the digital age. So a lot of times uh, parental blocks are always a key component as well. And then by the end of the night, they have I Am Jane Doe, which kind of does a documentary which tells us the story about uh, human trafficking. And then, of course, they'll have a panel discussion where they'll be able to answer some of your questions. They might have some time for, uh, for some Q&A between some of these uh, topics as well. So you guys can check that out. Once again, it's happening at the University Center Theater from March 20, uh, on March 29th from 8 a.m. to about 8 p.m. There's a whole bunch of things going on there that day, and it's also during a conference for a lot of officers who will be coming down to learn about the warning signs of sexual trafficking. So I just thought this was a very important topic to discuss. There's just a lot of information, but I think it's uh, – I definitely learned a lot just watching from that meeting, and I just kind of want to give you the flyover. If you want to learn more information about uh, public safety and health, and other committee meetings, you can go to ci.mozilla.mt.us. It's a nice website. It is uh, wonderful to get connected to your community, to the government, and Missoula always invites a lot of uh, statewide organizations to come down to give these kind of presentations to educate Missoula about some of the things that are happening in our state and around the world as well. All right, I'm going to change, switch gears. I'm going to show you guys a short PSA from our uh, from our spring flicks. Our spring flicks are coming up uh, in two weeks, and we're still looking for kids to sign up for our uh, week-long camp during spring break. So if you have kids who are going to be sticking around and you don't want them to be in front of their uh, video games and they, and you want those kids to be a little more creative, $150 will bring you this wonderful camp that you're about to see a little tease of. Spring break is just around the corner. While some of you get to go on vacation, MCAT lets your kids get away from reality to join us March 26th through the 30th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for only $150. Kids will create and share their own works of media arts ranging from reality to fantasy. 
Kids will learn how to shoot, edit, record voiceovers, and make their stories come to life. How do kids play with these things? Find out more by logging on to MCAT.org and clicking on our Spring Flicks Camp to sign up. You have fallen down. Take my hand in friendship. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time to talk about some events that are happening in the city of Missoula. There are a lot of events always happening, but this one, but today there's a couple other events that are happening. Um, there's a conference happening um, starting at the University of Montana at noon today. It's right in at work conference. I'll get to that. But kicking things off this morning, if you want your kids to learn some gymnastics, we do under, in Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Mismo Gymnastics and Root, Roots Acro Sports Center is the place to be from 9 a.m. to about 12. Kids get to do some tumbling. It's basically a giant child-proof building where kids get to uh, have some indoor fun. Um, Tiny Tales starting around 10.30 this morning. Um, Tiny Tales and Storytime is geared towards kids who who are just picking up books for the first time, and Muzo Public Library helps facilitate story times and have kids um, come together and kind of interact with one another while at the same time picking up, interacting with the books. Um, the Minds Lab data collection, Missoula Public Library is asking and actually looking for kid participants to do data collection. The Mind Lab is excited to announce that they will be conducting some more research sessions at the Missoula Public Library. And you can come from um, starting at 10 a.m. Um, you can do Thursdays, which is 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, 10 a.m. to noon today uh, to participate. They are currently looking for participants aged three to eight years old. So if you have a kid, they're looking to collect some data and do some research as well. So uh, have your kids become a guinea pig for the Missoula Public Library. Um, now going back to Right In At Work Conference, the University of Montana will host renowned editor Gary Ficklejun, Vice President of Comf. F um, for the uh, Writing at Work conference on Friday, March 16th, today. Um, he has edited the Raymond Carver, Tobias Wolf, Richard Ford, Haruku Makami, uh, Dana Tart, uh, Cormac McCarthy, and UM's own Bill Kittredge, among others. The conference is free and open to the public. It happens from 12 to 5 p.m. in the UC Theater at the University of Montana. So if you're not familiar with the UC, it is at the University of Montana. Go to the summit of the M, look across the, across the street, Slightly look left of the uh, dormitory, and you got the university center. Anyways, um, gr uh, if you're interested in playing some card games, the Missoula Senior Center is the place to be around 1230-ish. Um, Cribbage and Bridge is hosted there every single Friday. Um, Teen Writers Group is hosted at the Missoula Public Library every Friday after school at 3.30 p.m. to improve some of the kids' writing skills. So kids and teens can um, improve their writing skills, get some positive feedback, and it's a good way just to write and basically make stories. And if they want to come to MCAT and make those stories um, to film, they can. Uh, <laughs> Family fun time at the Y starts at 3.30 p.m. A lot of times they have a lot of early morning stuff, but for Fridays, it's in the afternoon, starting at 3.30 p.m. Family fun time, they have rock walls, they have gyms, they have swimming pools. YMCA has a lot of different fun activity um, areas for kids to enjoy and play. Um, Grizz softball, Grizzly softball field, so the University of Montana softball girls team is going against Utah Valley, and it's off of South Avenue near the uh, kind of, I guess they call them the Dorm Blazers, so you can check out some of those fields, and they're going to be playing some Grizz softball. Uh, spring Fling Hoedown, and the Rattlesnake PTA, Rattlesnake Elementary School, is hosting a hoedown. It's free community event featuring kid and family friendly activities. Uh, they have uh, bingo, face painting, country western, dine dancing, picture booth, and more, plus a silent auction, fundraiser, and prize raffles. All community members are welcome to the Rattlesnake Spring Fling. Invite your friends, neighbors, and relatives. They need not to attend this school to enjoy this great event. A Buddy DeFranco Jazz Festival wraps up tonight uh, at 7.30 p.m. with clinics all day at the Denison Theater and at the University of Montana Recital Hall, so you guys can check it out. It's going to be about, it's usually about $20 if you're a general, um, $10 for students, and I think it's $15 if you're a senior citizen. Uh, last night they had their first night of the Jazz Festival. Tonight they're going to have their wrap-up show, so if you guys are planning on doing that, you can do that. St. Francis, I think it's, uh, God, I don't remember what the church name is, but on Tremont's Tremont Street. They usually have kind of like an after uh, after concert jazz club kind of scene in the church, and it's on Tremont Street. And they usually do that like kind of like right after. So if you want more jazz and you can't get enough of that jazz, Buddy DeFranco has all the jazz you need this week. Grizz Glow. 5K fun run. So University of Montana golf course, runners and walkers of all ages are invited to take part in the sixth annual Grizz Glow 5K fun run. At 8 p.m. Friday, March 16th, 2018 at the University of Montana golf course registration on campus recreation online registration portion. Of course, you can uh, go to, you can register 
the day of and the fee of $30 and proceeds go to uh, Grizz Glow Support UM's recreational youth programs. Funds raised are integral to making youth camps a one-of-a-kind experience. Your support can bring uh, new experiences to our camps or help a camper whose family cannot afford tuition. Missoula's homegrown comedy competition. So, of course, every th first Thursday of the month, Union Club is hosted by John Howard, who uh, does the homegrown comedy co competition, and they invite uh, comedians who, ho who are brave enough to do the open mic uh, comedy nights at Union Club to um, basically compete. And this is going to um, kick off at the Roxy at 8 p.m. And this is $11. And it, entry fee are for comic and guests um, is $11, and which goes towards the prize money for the winners. So, yeah, and that's happening tonight at the Roxy. Um, some of the late night events also that are happening, of course, is this is the last weekend to go check out that one show, 39 Steps at MCT, 7.30 tonight, 7.30 uh, uh, Saturday, 6.30 on Sunday with 2 p.m. matinees on the weekend as well. It is uh, Alfred Hitchcock ba pinned um, play, which is a um, – usually Alfred Hitchcock is very uh, serious, dramatic, intense um, – major shadows, um, but this one is a very uh, comedic and fast-paced uh, um, comedy um, from the Broadway 39 Steps. So that's happening then. Um, world premiere of In the Snow is going to be at the Roxy. Grizz Glow, Missoula Homegrown Comedy, uh, I already said that. End of Winter Formal, the Scurfs and uh, Mermaid Book Club is going to be at Free Cycles. So they're doing a, a nice little concert. Free Cycles always has some of the best concerts there. And you can go, can go check it out starting at 8 p.m. And they usually run into about 10, 1030. It is a residential neighborhood, so they try to keep it down, f um, try to make it easier for some of the neighbors. Deep Cuts, The Sword and The Sorcerer is going to be at the Roxy. Lola Creek Band is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. Band in Motion is going to be the Union Club. The Mad Hat is going to be the Top Hat. And VFW, you got a bunch of rock music with a bunch of bands and a bunch of different names happening tonight. So I have another short PSA for you guys, which I will show you right now. And then when I come back, I'll talk about your weekend events right after this. Of course, that'll help kick off your Saturday events if you got, if you have any kids who are age 9 to about 14 years of age who love stop animation, who want some help making a good stop animated film, maybe do a mixed media thing with some Legos like you just saw and live action. Um, you can come on down here. Myself and Neil will be able to teach some kids some, a little bit of stop animation. Stop animation is really easy to learn, but it takes a lifetime to master. So it's, it's, basically, like, it's basically like Texas Hold'em. I don't know why I'm talking about Texas Hold'em. Let's talk about some Saturday events. Winter market. Hey, the uh, weather's starting to warm up a little bit. The farmer's market isn't quite here yet, but the winter market is still here, and it's at the Missoula Senior Center from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Open printmaking with Bev Glukert. Um, this is going to be the Missoula Art Museum. Missoula Art Museum has been hosting a lot of art classes for a lot of people, so you can learn any um, experiment with a variety of techniques, including additives and subtractive process, ghost prints, and chincoli uh, with, a, with or without press. Uh, learn critical skills in expression and imagine making in this fun hands-on workshop. And the right stuff 
Living Art of Montana. It's just down the street. 10.30 a.m. downtown Missoula uh, hosts the writing is a painting of the voice. Um, and that's a quote by Vol Voltaire. Um, a, a Living Art of Montana is a drop-in Saturday writing workshop facilitated by Jack Shiflett. Of course, you saw Jack Shiflett at one of our uh, media assistance grants programs uh, through HealthWise. The right stuff is for writers and non-writers alike. They use easy guided uh, writing prompts to explore writing experience necessarily. For questions, please call 549-5329. Living Art is a place to create, share, and heal. And this is at livingartofmontana.org. St. Patrick's Day Parade is starting at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, Monet's Water Lilies Painting with a Twist is happening um, at 1 p.m. So if you guys are done with the parade and you want to do some painting, uh, painting with a twist, uh, you get a glass of wine in one hand and a paintbrush in the other, pairing a masterpiece, guided instruction. This is one that looks awesome with any color scheme and any decor, and it's a classic. It's Monet's Water Lilies. Um, and if you guys are pretty much downtown anyways, you might as well drop your kids off and tie one over at the Thomas Marr Bar while uh, MCAT does our Saturday drop-ins from 1 to 5 p.m. Um, it's a place to create. <laughs> Last weekend for 39 Steps, uh, once again, it's uh, MC Missoula Community Theater host uh, is doing their show, 39 Steps. Alfred Hitchcock penned um, movie, which has become a Broadway play, which the MCT has uh, rented the rights to to perform this uh this weekend it was last week i haven't heard anything from people who've seen it but um it should be good because you got six uh, actors who are portraying over a hundred different parts it's gonna be fun uh open house in the makerspace mizzou public library starting at 3 p.m open time allows visitors to explore the resources of the makerspace learn how to use the equipment or to work on a project of their choice from 3 to 6 p.m at the mizzou public library they have a 3d printer why not uh, Starlighter, Swing Band, and St. Patrick's Day Dinner at the Missoula Senior Center. So the Starlighters are coming to the Missoula Senior Center to serve a night of great ba big band music, swing dancing, and a delicious dinner. Join us for traditional Irish feast uh, with corned beef and cabbage, soda bread, and a fun green dessert. And follow it all up with a night of dancing uh, on the dance floor, in, uh, on the best dance floor in town. Of course, the rest of your uh, nightly events are all starting late night at 8 p.m., Let's kick things off with you got the Missoula Folklore Society is going to be at the Union Hall at 8 p.m. Um, movie Cult Moon is going to be at the Roxy. I think that's uh, Sam, Rock Sam Rockwell, Kevin Spacey movie. Um, Dead Hipster, St. Patrick's Day Dance Party is going to be at the Iron Horse Bar and Grill. Absolutely, the Chris Moon is going to be at the Badlander. You got Karaoke by Kaleidoscope at VFW. You got Cash for Junkers at Union Club. You got Lola Creek Band at the Sunrise Saloon and Lock Saw Cartel. Lock Saw is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge tonight, wrapping up your Saturday events as well. Um, some of your Sunday stuff is you got Easter Bunny Breakfast at the Southgate Mall at 10 a.m. on Sunday, Easter Bunny Photos. So if you have a kid and you want to have another cute Easter Bunny photo, Southgate Mall starts it at 10 a.m. on Sunday. Boom. Get those adorable kids taking pictures of blah, blah, blah. Seventh Annual Friends of the Library Appraisal Fair, Missoula Public Library. If you have an old book that you think is worth something, bring it down to the library. 1 p.m., and you can see if, whether your book is worth anything. Uh, yeah. Do, do, do. Yeah, there's, there, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff. If you want more information, you go to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net is for everything you need to know about what's happening in Missoula. Hey, what do you want to do tonight? I don't know. Well, why don't you check MissoulaEvents.net? I was like, oh, great. Oh, did you hear about this one thing? No, because I read it. Okay, great. MissoulaEvents.net. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> All right, so anyways, uh, <laughs> let's learn about Wake Up Missoula. WakeUpMissoula.wixsite.com slash WakeUpMissoula. If you Google Wake Up Missoula, you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. I post all the videos that I show. I post, I mean, my whole show online as well, but I, of course, Flagship Friday gets its own little upload as well as some of our interviews. So if you are an organization here in town to promote an event, a cause, you can contact us at mcat.org so you can email us mcat at mcat.org you can also call us at 542-6228 once again we're still looking for our mcat focus groups um, for april april is coming around and it's just around the corner and we need your vision to drive our passion for community service for the last for the next 10 years mcat will be holding four focus groups to gather information from you of what mcat can do in the future 
Um, Spring Flicks, once again, is happening. We're only another, we have another full week until camp start for spring break from the 26th through the 30th. MCAT Saturday drop-ins are happening all the way until May. So every single Saturday until May, we have Saturday drop-ins from 1 to 5 for kids age 9 to 14. Hey, if you're a parent and you want, you want to hang out with your kids, you're more than welcome to hang out, you know? If you, if, but of course, you know, some parents just like to drop their kids off and be like, whew, I want to do my own thing. And this is the perfect place to do it. All right, anyways, I think I've done <laughs> enough for today. Um, MCAT will be open today from 11 to 7 p.m. For anybody who wants to check out camera equipment or want to get involved with MCAT, MCAT provides camera equipment and um, editing software for people who want to make their movies and create their own thing. Every Wednesday is orientation starting at 5.30. Um, you have to sign up to be able to check out equipment, but the only stipulation of using MCAT equipment is that you have to provide us a program to air on our channel 189. So. That about does it for Wake Up Missoula. I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. Um, hope you guys have a great weekend. Be safe because police officers will be on high alert this weekend because St. Patrick's Day falls on a Saturday. And the parade will start sometime around 10 a.m. And it will go on until about 12.30, 1 p.m. All the, uh, all the kind of like the early morning festivities as well. So... Just be aware that there are going to be a bunch of people on the street. So if you do plan on going out tonight, even if you're not drinking, just be aware that other people definitely will be drinking. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Have a great and wonderful weekend, guys, and be safe.